Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 11th webinar of the series Shaping World as Future. My name is May, and I am a law graduate working as an executive in the regulatory department here at Grand Thornton. Um, today's theme shall focus on the environment, specifically waste management, um, planning, and the need for a triple bottom strategy. We will be tackling whether we are taking into consideration the social and environmental pillars apart from economic concerns. Did the pandemic perhaps spike the usage of single use plastics? How is hazardous and clinical waste managed in a pandemic? So joining me in today's discussion um, are three panelists. First, we have Miss Mary Gerty, an entrepreneur, the chairperson and the joint managing director of Greenskip Services, a company she co-founded in 1992. Pioneering waste management and in Malta, she has worked incessantly with the industrial and government authorities in order to initiate and um, promote best practices in waste management. We also have Mr. Richard Belocca, um, who held various roles focusing on sustainable development, energy and other large scale infrastructures. He joined um, Water Services Corporation as its CEO in 2017 and is currently the CEO at WasteServe, which is moving to a circular economy approach, um, focusing on resource maximization and efficiency. We also have Mr. Neil Ajus, who will be joining us shortly. Um, he has been swimming competitively for the past 22 years, having represented Malta at the 2004 Olympics in Athens. Neil is also one of the pioneers behind the Wave of Change movement, who very recently, between the 25th and 26th of June, took on the epic Sicily to Malta 100 km swim, all to raise awareness about the ever-growing issue of plastic pollution in our seas. So, um, I would like to start with you, Richard. So, PPEs and face masks and gloves are being used as a measure to combat the pandemic, especially face masks. Um, a recent article I came across on The Guardian bore a very bold um, headline which stated more masks than jellyfish. A glut of discarded single-use masks and gloves is washing up on our shorelines and littering the seabed. Um, millions around the world have actually turned to single-use plastic in efforts to combat the pandemic. Um, but is this worsening another epidemic, which is plastic pollution? How can we discard these materials um, properly? And is it the use of plastic in general that is the problem, apart from the way it might be disposed of? Uh, um, it's, a, it's a very interesting question. The, the pandemic uh, was was a challenging time uh, for for most sectors, uh, but especially even for for the waste management sector. Um, our, our sector had to keep going. Uh, our workers couldn't work from home. Uh, they were frontliners and uh, disposing uh, of the waste that was being generated throughout this period. And, and as you rightly say, um, we've not not introduced new kinds of waste, but uh, some of them grew exponentially. The, the clinical waste, for instance, processed by WASEF uh, during uh, this period was threefold uh, to that of the same period on average uh, the previous year. Um, during these times, obviously, health considerations uh, took, took precedence. Uh, we took advice from the health authorities and obviously uh, when it came to single-use plastics, if that was more uh, appropriate from a health perspective, uh, that is where uh, the, the, the authorities pointed to. Uh, from our end, we process clinical waste as usual in our clinical waste incinerator. We took also uh, precautionary measures, increased our uh, storage to ensure that if the incinerator is down, uh, we have a bigger cushion and, and in fact it proved uh, essential, um, but when it comes to households, uh, I think the most important element one is to continue to try to move away, uh, not from plastic in general, but from any uh, single use product. Nowadays, uh, there are a lot of plastic bottles that are uh, made from recyclable materials that are reusable, that are fine, uh, but it is fundamental to move away uh, from single use products and also to dispose of any single use product and any other material in, in an appropriate manner. And uh, waste separation is something that is uh, gearing up well in Malta. 
uh, but we need to do more. Everyone needs to do more. The authorities need to do more. WaySelf needs to do more. Uh, the public so far has proven to be uh, quite quite responsible and up to the challenge. Uh, but now I think we're we're at a juncture where we need to make make a great leap uh, and increase our separation effort. So uh, we start uh, diverting waste according to a stream so that we can make uh, most use of waste as as a resource. Exactly, I completely agree. Um, I think it has to start with the people to actually affect a change. Um, over to you, Mary. So waste management is an essential public service to minimize possible secondary effects on health and the environment. Many types of medical and hazardous waste were and are still being generated during the pandemic, even though maybe in Malta we're veering towards the end, including infected masks, gloves and PPEs. So how is this hazardous waste managed safely and effectively in order to minimize possible secondary impacts upon, upon health and the environment? I think you're muted, Mary. Uh, you are muted. <laughs> okay, am I okay now? Right. Yes. Okay, um, I, I was saying that, thank you, thank you, May, um, for this opportunity. Um, during the pandemic, um, collecting clinical waste, what we call clinical waste, was quite a challenge actually. Because first of all, you know that you are visiting hospitals where um, COVID patients were being treated and then you have to go to other hospitals. So we designed a procedure whereby um, the driver, obviously the health of the driver and the health of the generator are of utmost importance. You don't want to cross contaminate if you are going from one hospital to another to take um, uh, any 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 uh, any germs with you, so one has to uh, make sure that whatever you are wearing at that point in time, if you are visiting a hospital um, that has COVID patients, then you need to remove uh, you remove the glove, remove the mask, remove uh, your Tyvek suit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Put them in the bin and um, put a new set, a uh, new mask, uh, new Tyvek suit, etc., to visit another hospital so as not to cross contaminate. So yes, this has created a huge amount of waste. First of all, because of the internally, the hospital or the clinic would have been using hundreds of masks on a daily basis. And we had asked them to triple, double bag everything uh, for as a precaution, even for their workers. So that has taken a large amount of plastic bags that were being incinerated. Um, obviously, then there is the, the cleaning of the bin itself before um, it is being loaded. So uh, loads of alcohol and so on. And then obviously you, you take it to the incinerator and the change of bin, you change the bin when you when you go to the clinic or hospital. Um, with regards to other hazardous waste, this continued as usual. There are the usual precautions taken. Um, the masks and um, gloves from uh, factories, for example, from the industry, um, some decided to treat them as clinical, others that did not have any uh, suspects or anybody that was uh, positive in their, uh, in their uh, premises, on their premises, they decided to move in the normal way with double bagging at the same time. So um, we had two scenarios. Um, for for uh, for this type of waste, but yes, I will say that it increased uh, substantially uh, due to this. Um, obviously, as Mr. Biloka said, the the uh, the incinerator had to do all the job. 
Um, this was with regards to COVID. Um, uh, on our side, for example, then, um, obviously our, our drivers had to be, um, uh, let's say, instructed on the use of how to use the mask, how to remove it, how to remove the gloves. They used double gloves as well. Uh, obviously, that created another huge amount on our side going from one place to the other um, uh, so as not to contaminate another client. Perfect. Thank you, Mary. Um, I actually think that Neil has joined us in the meantime. Um, so my next question goes out to him. Uh, welcome, Neil. Hi. And Morning. Um, as I have previously stated, Neil took on the difficult challenge of swimming a total of 100 kilometers from Sicily to Malta to raise awareness about how single-use plastics are affecting our Maltese seas. Um, you can see images of plastic waste in the sea, but I guess it can be a bit difficult to connect those images to plastic that you're buying and using every day. So, Neil, if you can elaborate on the aim behind Wave of Change and actually how can we connect the dots? How does single-use plastic and getting rid of it end up as marine litter? Uh, basically, yes. Hi, morning, first of all. Um, morning. When you mentioned that we can't really relate to it, I don't really agree because the amount of plastic and the amount of things that we see in the sea is what we are leaving on our benches when we when we go out for an ice cream what we're mo at the moment there are lots of um, gloves and and masks and i mean it's very relatable to what we use what we use is what we see in the in the sea some of it obviously would have been deteriorated for, um, so it will be decomposed slightly but it's what we use and what we use by the sea and when we go um, in our countryside we, we live in a country where there's a lot of it's very windy, so if you're going to leave stuff behind and it's going to be a windy weekend, that's all going to be blown into the sea. We're an island, so each way the wind is blowing, it's blowing towards the sea. And that's when the issues start, because then um, the fish and uh, start eating the plastic, so the plastic's in their stomach. And obviously, once we're going to start um, f eating these fish, it's not going to be healthy for us with the with their plastic in their stomach. I mean, fair enough, we do remove the plastic, but I'm sure it has effects on their whole on their whole body. Um, when it comes to us, wave of change, when we where we come into it is we're basically trying to inspire people to to make a change and to make a change in their lives, um, which is basically super important because we we tend to, especially when not people, when nobody's watching, we tend to not be as environmentally friendly as when people are watching. So if I'm on my own and with my friends and it's nighttime and I'm by the beach, I find it OK for me to leave the plastic and leave the rubbish behind because no one's really watching. Um, so when we do what the advantages we have of doing an event like this, such a big event, we really get captured the people's attention and once we have that attention, we really need to drive the message home um, and and basically really focus on that. Um, so this is what we're about. We're about trying to inspire people to make change through the extraordinary events that we we do. Perfect. Um, thank you, Neil. One thing I would definitely like to mention is the marine litter campaign called Saving Our Blue, whereby a number of cleanups um, are actually being held in collaboration with WasteServe. Um, so what other projects and initiatives is WasteServe managing in this sphere um, of waste management and sustainability? Yes, we have, we have a number of initiatives and uh, touching upon uh, Neil's point, um, I think uh, that's the way forward because we're, we're, Neil is not speaking about cleaning, just cleaning the beach, but it's, he's speaking about uh, not dirtying it in the first place. Um, uh, Wasted right now, uh, we we support many initiatives, including cleanups because cleanups are still good, um, but ideally we go into prevention. Um, and uh, at yeah. times, like you start doubting yourself because you say like, um, we shouldn't even be talking about this because it should be like crystal clear to everyone that we shouldn't uh, dirty beaches, we shouldn't throw away uh, 
at, at times you would say we shouldn't even use single use plastics, uh, let alone leaving them uh, behind uh, uh, in, in, on a beach or, or in the countryside. Um, so what we're doing now, we're also focusing on campaigns um, that help the people uh, move uh, to this uh, new ambition, new environmental ambition. We're not speaking just about cleaning, but we're speaking about understanding that waste is not waste, but it's a resource and, uh, and separation is crucial. And if people separate, uh, we will not have plastic flying around because that plastic would go in the right container uh, for it to be reused. Um, so far, WASEF has done uh, some massive work in the field of educational campaign. We've had the Sort It Out campaign, which was a very big success. It also led to the introduction of the organic waste separation, which is still uh, working wonders. Um, but now we're moving to another level where we don't just tell people what they should be doing, but why they're doing it. And the why is it's all right, like we need a, a clean environment, but more than that, we're wasting a resource. Uh, so for instance, if plastic uh, goes into the environment, we're making a damage. If it comes to us separated, uh, we are turning it into another product. Uh, last, just last week, we've exported two shiploads of glass uh, to Turkey. Like the sea is literally littered with glass at the bottom. Uh, that's a waste. Uh, that glass now is going to a plant where it will be washed. Uh, this we're speaking about 6,500 tons of glass, like a, an enormous amount, and it will be turned into new glass bottles. Um, next week we are starting uh, what we call a rudimentary line, where we will start uh, collecting high-quality recyclables from from the grey bag, uh, and that material will be channeled into uh, being reused. So what we're doing uh, with the EcoHive campaign. We're explaining this investment that is being undertaken, the plant, because the plant is important, uh, but explaining to people what this plant uh, does uh, and how they can contribute. Actually, they're essential. Like I, I, I could be entrusted like uh, for the projects we have. We have nearly half a billion euro budget. Uh, that money would go to waste if people do not do their share. And here, here I'm very hopeful. Like we don't, uh, we don't need to be too negative because. Uh, the general public so far has shown very encouraging signs and I think compared uh, to like 10, 15 years ago, there was a massive leap in Malta, but still much more needs to be done. But we need to focus on the positive work done so far on initiatives as, as the one done by Neil that attract a lot of attention and sensitize the public like Neil did, did I, I think, a, a mammoth physical task, you know, to, to sensitize the public for someone uh, not to throw a plastic bottle in the black bag and throw it in the gray bag. You know, like I, I don't think they would use even 10 calories to do it. Uh, so so the effort is uncomparable, but th that is the message we would like to pass to the people. Like there's a very small effort uh, that will make a big difference. Exactly, I totally agree. And as you were saying before, um, saying why and actually I think there needs to be a message to be communicated to the public. There has to be a purpose behind this because um, the sad reality is that people are still littering and people are still putting plastic bottles in a black bag instead of um, the correct grey bag. Or... So I think that um, not just education, but telling people why is a very important thing to do. Um, so over to you, Mary. Um, the traditional triple bottom line framework considers economic, social and environmental impact of decision outcomes, although this concept was originally intended for the business community. We cannot just consider the economic perspective because landfilling, for instance, would be the worst, the, the most economical, but from a social acceptability perspective and environmentally, it would score the worst. So how can we further incorporate um, these two social and environmental pillars into waste management? And is the strong financial payback one of the major problems? OK, it's a long question. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so let's start. Yes, landfilling is indeed the cheapest option. The cheapest option for us, because when we are landfilling, we are not calculating any of the other costs. And uh, we have always discussed this, that uh, landfilling should be uh, the higher cost, whereas in Malta, um, the cost we pay for landfilling is the cheapest cost. Because when you are starting to separate, 
and then collecting separately. There is a cost to collecting separately rather than putting everything in one bag. So there is the financial cost also of separating. But when we think about landfilling, although at face value um, it looks like the cheaper option, in reality it's the most expensive option in the long term. You have a landfill, you have it there for I don't know how many years, so we will leave it to, to the next and the next and the next generation probably. They will know how, uh, how, what a lot of resources we have thrown away and we have not used. So they might use them in the future, who knows? Um, people, I think, have learned to appreciate the value of an open space. So moving towards that mentality, the change in mentality um, to move to a cleaner space rather than having a landfill, having a park, rather than having a landfill or a dirty area, having uh, 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 the natural surroundings of a rural area. Um, because you do see, you do see a lot even in the, in the, in the countryside, um, mounds of waste that somebody has thrown away. Why? I don't know. We have the bulky refuse, we have companies that can come and take your waste away, but still for a pittance, People prefer to go with their cars or their trucks and throw waste anywhere they can, they can imagine. That is environmental damage because you are spoiling the environment with waste that should not be there. It should not be there. So yes, I think people, the mentality is changing and people are becoming conscious and talking about, yes, somebody has littered somewhere like Neil was doing before. You know, the, the, the sea is uh, in a terrible state, not only in Malta, but, but worldwide, even in China. And uh, that is one of the reasons why we now cannot export anymore to China. Um, we have to think about also um, the mentality, and we must move away from this, that as long as I don't see the waste, as long as it is taken away from, uh, from behind the door, it's not in my backyard, thank you very much, just take it away, put it anywhere you want, as long as I don't see it. But if we look at uh, the Mata plant fill, it is ours, all of us. We must all point a finger at each and every one of us. Um, with, 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 with regards to waste management, I think we need a huge overhaul in, uh, in collection. We need to, to, uh, to start working around this so that people will appreciate, um, start appreciating the efforts being done by everyone. Because many a time, I mean, I've been in this business now for 28 years. There have been changes. There have there has been a, a betterment of, of of collection and so on, but it's still not enough. Still not enough. We need to do more. We need to tell the people if you are recycling, instead of seeing the bottle, instead of seeing the plastic lying around, year after year after year, you don't see it. You get a new bottle. We're saving on resources at the at the same time. And um, apart from that, I mean, we work mostly with the industry. Contrary to what many think, the industry is quite and very much hands-on with what they need to do. Because uh, let's not forget that many of them are ISO certified. When you are ISO certified or EMA certified, you need to be in line with environmental objectives, you need to be in line with how you dispose of your waste, how to use your your energy and so on and so forth. So yes, uh, there are challenges in the business. There are challenges also for export of waste, especially during the COVID period. It has been extremely difficult to export whatever we have collected, recovered as materials because um, the value of the material goes in line with uh, the oil prices. So you get a lowering of the oil prices, um, the material um, lowers in price. Obviously, we don't just 
put it on a truck like the mainland Europe does and take it to the next facility. For us, it means exporting and exporting is not uh, cheap um, to load a container and to ship it. It's not, uh, it's, it's, it doesn't come cheap. So uh, apart from that, then you have the people that uh, there, there might be a glut and so the prices get even lo um, lower. So there is a challenge in, uh, in that as well. Thank you. Mary, a UN report published in May 2020 suggests that as a result of the pandemic and the temporary shutdown of our activities, which it consequently brought about, including the reduced traffic on seas due, due to a halt within the tourism sector and a reduction of carriage of goods by sea to a certain extent, the oceans were able to breathe and also recover from pollution, overfishing, as well as the impacts of climate change. A small example of this, which is definitely worth mentioning, is the increase in, for example, dolphin sightings in several locations around Malta, as coronavirus has certainly quietened our coastlines. This raises a question of what effect COVID-19 measures were and are having on marine life. So, um, Neil, uh, plastic waste and debris disposed of in the sea lead to the death of millions of marine species. So how can human activity coexist with marine life and how can we preserve and celebrate it? Um, before answering your question, can I just make a point to Mary um, that we do really we do really have a lot of um, services like bulky refuse and whatnot. But I really feel like that a lot of people don't know they exist. These services, if you if I walk around my village and ask people what would they do if they had to throw away their fridge or what would they do? A lot of them wouldn't know that this service exists. It needs to be advertised more. The billboards need to be used not only for political gain, but also for educating the public, showing them that these services exist because we live in a bubble and once you go outside and we know about it and we're interested in it and we want to save the planet, say, but when you go outside this bubble and there are people who aren't really knowledgeable or keen about it, they wouldn't know that these services exist. So we really need to be educating the public a lot more about what options they have to dispose of things and how to dispose of it. What goes in a grey bag? What doesn't go in a grey bag? Do they need to clean it? If you just walk around the village or your town and ask a few people, you'll be surprised how many won't be able to give you the correct answers. Yes, I, I agree with you. Education is uh, very important. Yes, I agree with you. We just need to like tell them about them, these services, because I'm sure if it's easier for him to rather than get a truck, put his fridge or sofa in a truck, drive in the middle of the night to God knows where to dispose of it. And if you tell him, listen, if you just put it outside your door on Thursday morning, they will take it from you for you. I'm sure he will choose that option. Well, the local councils have to do that. Yes, no, no, I'm just bringing it up that like we need to, sure. this is one thing that we need to work on. Yeah, yeah it, it is true many, many a time. Uh, the problem is here that you have a department, you have another department and one department doesn't know what the other department yeah. is doing. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and also going back to your, to the question. Um, yes, I, I, it was great to see how one thing that COVID did teach me is that the planet can survive without us. It doesn't need us. We need the planet. So if we don't exist and we disappear as a race, you see, as you're saying, more fish. I mean, the amount of fish that I've seen this year compared to last year when swimming by the reefs near Ramla and Meliha is, is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more. So there is a lot more activity happening. You can see the dolphins coming closer to land. You can see um, uh, all sorts of things seeing from one country to another where you couldn't see because of the air pollution. Um, so the, 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 the planet thrives without us. So we need to understand how we can cohabitate with it without destroying it. Um, it's, it's difficult this because as you could see, everyone was sharing these posts of dolphins, thousands and thousands of people seeing them. Yes, but yes. when the when the when the restrictions were lifted, everyone went back to their normal life, normal routine, normal everything, not being conscious or more conscious or happy of what they were seeing. And so let's see how we can maintain this and keep this 
there for a longer period. So we're still a bit backwards with that because we were shown we were shown a glimpse of it, and still within uh, within uh, weeks we went back to to 100% of what we're doing, if not. 200 because all the shops opened and everyone had to use single use plastics. You go, everyone had to use everything had to be single use. So the amount of plastic that they must be getting has increased a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, I was at the hairdresser after the first few weeks within half an hour, he threw away. I don't know how many plastic sheets and and scissors and this and that and single use things. So we very quickly forgot that that what what we gained out of not being around for for so long. Um, and what was the second part of the question you asked me? So and the second part, how can we exist, um, coexist with marine life and how how we can preserve and celebrate it? Uh, we can we can coexist. We just need to do everything in moderation and we need to understand what are causing the biggest damage to it and what is not and try and find that balance. The only way it will work is with with restrictions and and fines from the government. That is how it needs to be introduced. And then once people get used to it, then the fines won't be given out so much and people will be respecting it more. I'll give, I'll give you an example like we're not as Maltese, we're not really rule followers when the I remember I was still quite young when they introduced wearing a seatbelt in a car. No one did it until the fine was very high and and then everyone started doing it and smoking in a club is the same thing. Nobody really does it unless the fine is really high. So unfortunately, we, we learned through through punishment. So um, rather than appreciation because we've shown we've shown it been shown to appreciate nature by seeing it thrive in the last few months but obviously then it didn't really last very long exactly i feel like we went um back to square one in that respect yeah um so i see that we're receiving questions and i will definitely address those towards the end of the webinar and um, i have a question for you richard actually um, the vision put forward by the Ministry for the Environment, Climate Change and Planning points toward, towards Malta finally being in a position to put a stop to its predominant reliance on landfilling, while opting to turn, um, to turn waste into a precious resource. How will waste serve aid Malta in driving the country towards a circular economy? Yes, all right, all right. Before, before getting there, I think I, I would like to uh... Uh, touch upon some some of the very valid arguments uh, that have just been made both uh, by by Mary and Neil. Uh, sure. And and I think I think there were some like valid points um, on on general characteristics of the Maltese population and reluctance uh, to to follow rules uh, points with regards to. Uh, not being aware of the services that are offered, and also points. Uh, I think Mary mentioned the fact that one department wouldn't know what the other is doing. Um, now, without looking too much to to the past, uh, because unless we're going to how do you say come up with new ideas, that's not too useful. Uh, we are seeing how how we can learn from from past experiences, also from positive experiences and how these uh, can be turned into concrete improvements. Uh, right now, like WasteServe obviously doesn't operate in isolation. We cooperate uh, with even NGOs uh, and with other government entities and departments. And the government, uh, especially the ministry under the leadership of, of uh, Minister Aron Farouja, is working on a great number of initiatives in, in terms of uh, the environment uh, and also including uh, completely revamped uh, waste management strategy that will include. Uh, I, I don't want to anticipate what is going to be published uh, quite quite soon in the public consultation. Will include a host of measures, uh, including some uh, that Neil uh, hinted to. Uh, we we've referred to fines. I think the fines, uh, in terms of dumping in the environment, have been significantly increased. And again, Neil made a very good point. He said like people might not be aware. Education is key. Uh, local councils offer the bulky refuge service where they virtually take uh, most waste 
from the household. Waste service staff, we have the roadshow, we have trucks uh, that visit uh, villages on a daily basis where people can go and uh, dispose of uh, non-conventional waste like cooking oil, like uh, electricity bulbs, uh, like uh, clothing. So the services are there and I, I do agree with Neil that more needs to be done uh, to alert the public about these services and uh, and uh, to show uh, how how important it is uh, to to dispose of the waste in a separate manner. Uh, over over and above this, uh, if if we if if the country if if the general population uh, separates 100% of all its waste and you don't have the infrastructure to process it, uh, then you have a very big problem because firstly you would lose the trust of the public and their interest in in separating waste. Uh, so as we are revamping uh, waste management policies, uh, we are also investing significantly the largest ever investment undertaken uh, on the island in waste management. We're speaking about half a billion euro uh, where we'll have uh, four new plants. Uh, one of them will be taking care of recyclable material uh, and it will have two lines so we can cater for paper separately from plastic, tin and other things. So we ensure that not only we separate waste and we dispose of it uh, in the best environmental manner, but we treat the public, the not the public, sorry, the products in a way that we maximize uh, their potential reuse. We will also have a, a new organic plant that will have composting facilities. Uh, this, this is a, a, a great addition uh, where we'll be using heat from the waste to energy plant to pasteurize uh, the compost mix that comes uh, from organic waste and we'll be giving it back uh, to the agricultural sector. This is what uh, circular economy is. Uh, when we go to schools and we speak about circular economy, I think if I was a kid, I wouldn't even be bothered to listen to such a boring term, what is circular economy? But try try to show a kid uh, where, where an apple comes from, how 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 the peel and, and uh, what's left of the apple could go in the white bag, how that could come to a serve to the plant and there's compost and the compost goes back to the tree. Uh, so the tree gives us more apples. Then the kids know why they are separating and how they get another uh, tasty apple after after they process the waste in a suitable manner. And then there will also be uh, the waste to energy plant. Uh, as administration, we're focusing heavily on uh, reducing waste and on separating waste, but still whatever you do, uh, there will be around 30-40% of the waste uh, that is not reusable, unfortunately. That waste, uh, if you don't have the facility, would go to landfill, to the least uh, environmental and sustainable option. Uh, contrastingly, that waste will now start going in, in less than three years in a waste to energy plant where it will be converted into energy. So, so what we're doing, uh, we're moving away. Neil earlier in, in, in his uh, talk mentioned when, when we are young. Um, I, I still remember in school uh, we had we had Shumim as as a character coming to tell us how important it was to keep the countryside clean. Um, Shumim wasn't enough, unfortunately. Shumim spoke about cleanliness. We are speaking about reducing waste, about keeping uh, the country clean, but also about uh, making use of that waste, not simply dumping it, because putting it in a landfill, it's out of sight. It's very costly, as Mary said, um, but still we're not making use of those resources. Um, we are rebranding our complex in, in the north of Malta to EcoHive, and we are borrowing uh, the character uh, of the bee. Why, why did we choose the bee? And especially uh, being targeted for children, because children are the future generation. They are the ones that will be operating this plant. Uh, the bee is an insect that uh, does a vital environmental service. Uh, it it uh, pollinates uh, fruit, it's crucial for plant reproduction. Uh, but after all this environmental work, it goes back uh, to its house uh, and, uh, and uh, it produces honey. So there's more to it. It's not simply an environmental service of pollination. It goes back and, and uh, it produces a resource. And that is uh, where we're trying to go. Uh, where we are going, where we're determined to go, where we're investing to go. And uh, then I, I, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of uh, educational campaign on, of initiatives uh, like Neil has done, 
and of the participation of everyone. Now, uh, WASEF and I think the general infrastructure of the country is catching up with, with the environmental ambition of the Maltese population, uh, but we will have uh, a waste management infrastructure that would be second to none, and then we will need an effort from everyone, an effort from the general public, and I'm sure that that effort will be forthcoming, uh, but also from the commercial sector. The commercial sector will have uh, to take its share. Its, its share. Uh, we, we need to separate more, especially commercial waste, organic waste uh, coming from the commercial sector. That's a very sizable chunk. Uh, so that this investment is a success and we could also start uh, concretely rehabilitating our landfills. Uh, Neil was mentioning uh, the way plastic deteriorates in the sea it takes uh, years, long years. Uh, all the other ways that is put into landfill, it is the case. It generates gases, it generates smells, it attracts predators. Uh, with these projects, uh, we would be processing waste uh, to stabilize materials, mainly ashes uh, and, and sludges that are, are clean, that are sterile. Uh, so the environment around our facilities will also improve, as will the sustainability, the overall sustainability. So what we're saying now, we're it's it's very exciting times for Malta when, when it comes to waste management because everything is being overhauled. Uh, we'll have virtually brand new uh, large scale state of the art infrastructure. There's a new waste management plan. Uh, consultations are starting very soon. Uh, interesting educational campaign. And I think we are lucky to have uh, an NGO sector, many NGOs that are doing a lot of uh, fruitful and concrete initiatives uh, that continue to help and to push and to keep us also on our toes to continue improving uh, towards uh, better environmental performance. And they emphasize that our effort should not only be cleaning, that have, having a clean environment, but also making use. Most of the resources are not infinite. Um, we, we live out of limited resources, so we need to focus on making use of our waste and not seeing it as waste, but as a resource. Thank you, Richard. Um, I think we have just enough time for two questions from the public. Um, the first question is, many people feel that it is pointless to separate because it all goes into the same place or it all goes into the same truck. What really does happen in practice? Yeah, sorry, that's that's a misconception, uh, unfortunately, and it's a misconception. It's you firstly uh, to, I would say, uh, quite an irresponsible section of the media uh, that, how do you say, spread incorrect information uh, and also I think due, uh, that we need to do our job better in explaining to the public uh, what happens uh, behind our own gates. Um, it is it is not true that the waste is mixed uh, right now, like my, my office where, where I'm speaking from, um, from the MATAP uh, complex uh, and I see with my own eyes daily how the waste streams are processed separately. Uh, we have the white bag uh, that goes into uh, an organic line and to two digesters that are like two massive stomachs uh, that, as we speak, are producing electricity. Uh, the grey bag and recyclable material is processed separately. Glass is also processed separately. We've just exported, as I said, 6,500 tons. And the black bag during the COVID period was going to landfill. Um, are we ideal? Uh, don't you have where, where we can improve? Of course we have. Uh, if we didn't have a problem, I think the government wouldn't have entrusted WASEF with such a massive budget. Um, so although today we are still uh, handling all the way separately, uh, we are now investing in new plant where we don't simply dispose of this waste, but we will maximizing uh, its reusability. Uh, we are recycling right now, uh, but we want to do more. Um, now there's an issue with with uh, waste separation at at garbage truck level, at, at the collector level. We do receive a lot of complaints from local councils uh, that certain collectors, uh, for instance, mix the black and the gray bag or the black and the white bag. Uh, that is not acceptable. Some of the collectors have two compartments, so that can be done. Uh, others uh, would first collect the black bag and leave the white bag. But I, I, I do admit, and I have no problem in doing it, that there are problems with, with enforcement and there are still trucks uh, that bring at our end uh, mixed waste. This uh, is being handled as we speak. As I said, um, there are there's a new waste management 
uh, strategy in the pipeline, but we're not even going to wait for that in the coming weeks. Wayserve will be uh, issuing revamped site rules. Um, I've been beefing up our inspectorate. Uh, I think we're adding uh, around 20 new inspectors and we will be an end of pipe, uh, end of line uh, enforcement mechanism. And, and I can assure everyone that within a few weeks, still very limited, the very limited cases of collectors, very limited, uh, that mix waste, uh, it, it will not be tolerated. It's still not tolerated. There are fines, but the fines are not enough. Uh, we will focus on education, but we will make it clear that everyone needs to be responsible. We're all on the same boat. And if the boat has a problem, uh, everyone needs, like sailors, uh, to, to group together and work towards the same task. I, I, I can assure everyone that Wayserve is determined to make the change that is required and to push even other uh, players in the sector, even if they come from the commercial sector, to do their part and abuse will definitely not be tolerated. Exactly. Um, maybe one of you can um, answer the final question. From where can businesses get information on differentiating between the different the different plastic packaging or information on substituting plastic packaging with bio biodegradable materials? Can I answer that? Yes, of course, yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, businesses normally uh, go to um, uh, go to private companies uh, for their uh, um, to answer any queries to them. Yes, with regards to biodegradable bags, uh, that uh, it's only organic material that goes into the uh, biodegradable bags. Any other bag, it is better that it is plastic, uh, which can be recycled rather than a biodegrade, a degradable plastic bag that cannot be recycled. The uh, degradable bags, unfortunately, um, uh, when they degrade, they become the microplastics that we have around on the island. It is better to have a plastic bag that can be recycled rather than a degradable bag that cannot. So yes, I would say that um, um, it is the private companies that can deal with the private, the private sector. Um, it's it's all about the circular economy. So plastic can be recycled, anything else cannot. And taking a point from what others said before about landfilling, a point I made before, landfilling is the cheapest option. Let's put the price up. So people will say recycling is better than landfilling. Other, otherwise we're going to remain, uh, remain the same. Uh, companies have a way of being sustainable because they they look at the money, the economic point. So looking at the economic point, if they are wasting, for them it's a loss. Reintegrating whatever they are or reusing whatever they might think is waste, and many have done so, um, would obviously uh, make an impact, economic impact on them. Let's not forget that any actions taken today uh, we shall only see the results in a few years. So um, let's let's do this. Thank you, Mary. Um, I guess this yes. brings us to a close. Yes. Maybe if I can just add uh, one one question, uh, one 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 comment to what Mary said. We have uh, our own website and and uh, customer care helpline. And if anyone is in doubt uh, on on any. Uh, issue they can simply call us and we'll do our best to answer if we don't have the answer ourselves uh, we'll lead them to the opposite department uh, that uh, would be able to answer it thank you for that um i guess this brings us to a close i would like to thank all three panelists for your time and your contribution towards this webinar thank you very much and also to our audience um, i hope you found this session as informative and enjoyable as i did and I take this opportunity to urge you um, to follow the next webinar taking place in a couple of minutes entitled Resiliency in Water and Wastewater Resources. Can we withstand a pandemic? Thank you all once again and wishing you a pleasant rest of your day. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye.